The African Origin of Modern Humans and the Different Racial Groups The African origin of modern humans is determined based on information about the history of our species, which comes from various sources such as the paleoanthropological record, archaeological remains, and historical inferences based on current genetic differences observed in humans. Although these sources of information are fragmentary, they have been converging in recent years on the same general story, resulting in an origin for Homo sapiens in Sub-Saharan Africa, what has been called the Out of Africa Theory. Although the African origin of modern humans is increasingly evident, there is not actually a region within Africa that is the cradle of humanity indisputably, since multiple evidence has been presented that shows differences between the results. Spread of modern humans above land and earlier colonization by Homo erectus and Homo neanderthalensis, the numbers of years before the present. With the advent of the study of mitochondrial DNA, there is genetic support for the traditional African migration hypothesis. In 1980, Brown first proposed that modern humans possess a common mitochondrial ancestor that would have lived about 180,000 years ago. In 1987, researchers Rebecca Kahn, Stonking and Wilson demonstrated that Homo sapiens originated in Africa, estimated between 140,000 and 290,000 years ago, and migrated from there to the rest of the world, replacing archaic humans. From the point of view of most paleontologists, African origin of modern humans is the most widely accepted model of the geographical origin and early migration of anatomically modern humans. The theory is called the Out of Africa model in the popular press, and academically the recent single origin hypothesis, replacement hypothesis, and the recent origin in Africa model. The concept was speculative until the 1980s, when it was corroborated by a recently done study of mitochondrial DNA, combined with evidence based on physical anthropology from archaic specimens found. Genetic studies and fossil evidence indicate that archaic Homo sapiens evolved into anatomically modern humans exclusively in Africa, between 200,000 and 60,000 years ago, that members of a branch of Homo sapiens left Africa between 125,000 and 60,000 years ago, and that over time these humans replaced previous human populations, such as Neanderthals and Homo erectus. The date of the first successful out-of-Africa migration, first migrants with living descendants, has fallen at about 60,000 years ago, as was suggested by genetics, although migration out of the continent may have taken place as early as 125,000 years ago according to Arab archaeological finds of tools in the region. The recent origin of modern humans in East Africa is the predominant accepted position within the scientific community. There are different theories about whether there was a single exodus or several. A growing number of researchers also suspect that North Africa was the original home of the modern humans who first walked off the continent. The most important competing hypothesis is the multi-regional origin of modern humans, which envisions a wave of Homo sapiens migrating to early Africa and their subsequent interbreeding with local Homo erectus populations in various regions of the world. Most multi-regionalists still see Africa as an important source of human genetic diversity, which is why they allow a greater role for hybridization. Genetic testing over the past decade has revealed that several species of now extinct archaic humans may have interbred with modern humans. These species have been confirmed to have left their genetic imprint in different regions around the world, Neanderthals are in all humans except Sub-Saharan Africans, Denisova hominid in Australasia, for example Melanesians, Australian Aborigines and some Negritos, and also it could have been interbreeding between Sub-Saharan Africans and a not yet unknown hominid, possibly remains of the ancient species Homo heidelbergensis. However, the rate of interbreeding was found to be relatively low, 1-10%. And other studies have suggested that the presence of Neanderthal or other archaic human genetic markers in modern humans may be attributed to shared ancestral traits originating 
from a common ancestor 500,000 from 800,000 years ago. With the development of anthropology in the 19th century, scholars disagreed about different theories of human development. Those such as Johann Friedrich Blumenbach and James Cowles Pritchard argued that since creation, the various human races had developed as different varieties sharing ancestry from one people or monogenism. His opponents, such as Louis Agassiz and Josiah C. Knott, advocated polygonism, or the separate development of human races as separate species or had developed as separate species through transmutation of ape species, with no common ancestor. The frontispiece to Huxley's Evidence of Man's Place in Nature, 1863, the image compares the skeletons of apes to humans. Charles Darwin was one of the first to propose common descent of living organisms, and among the first to suggest that all humans had common ancestors living in Africa. Darwin first suggested the out-of-Africa hypothesis after studying the behavior of African apes, one of which was exhibited at the London Zoo. The anatomist Thomas Huxley had also supported the hypothesis and suggested that African apes have a close evolutionary relationship with humans. However these views were opposed by Ernst Haeckel the German biologist who was a proponent of the out-of-Asia theory. Haeckel argued that humans were most closely related to the primates of Southeast Asia and rejected Darwin's African hypothesis. At the origin of man, Darwin speculated that humans had descended from apes that still had small brains, but walked upright, freeing their hands for uses that promoted intelligence. Besides, he thought those monkeys were African. How important was natural selection in the origin of different racial groups? Natural selection also operates to help produce the homogeneous groups we call races. In some cases the mutation has produced changes that led to those best adapted to living in certain climatic conditions. Those who did not inherit these beneficial genes tended to die faster than those who acquired them, leaving few, and ultimately no, offspring. Those who inherited the new genes flourished, so that the population of a given region all came to share the same physical characteristics. People from northwestern Europe who inherit light skin color genes were better adapted to the cloudy skies of this region. Melanin, the skin coloring pigment, protects from the sun's ultraviolet rays. Some of this radiation is needed by the body to help make calcium for bones. Too much of it results in calcium deposits in the arteries or kidneys, but also means little rickets in the growing child unless counteracted by a supply of vitamin D from other sources such as in the diet. Under the cloudy skies of northwestern Europe, darkly pigmented skin would be a disadvantage, on the other hand, in the sunnier parts of the world pale skin was a disadvantage, and one of the reasons why dark-skinned people flourished in this environment. Similarly, the mutations that produce short individual, robust body structure satisfied the needs of people who lived under these climatic conditions. The extremities, fingers and toes, are more susceptible to frostbite and the closer they are to the heat source in the main part of the body the better. A tall, thin body structure with a large skin surface is better adapted to life in a hot climate, where the problem is keeping the body cool in daily temperatures that often rise more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Other examples of physical adaptation to particularly demanding environments could be cited. American Indians living at very high elevations have had to develop larger lung capacities because the air in their environment contains less oxygen per cubic foot of air at sea level. On Tierra del Fuego and in the colder parts of Australia the natives adapted to the cold rains of this climatic environment by increasing the speed of their basal metabolic rate, their bodies produce more heat than ours. As far as we know, Climatic influences did not cause the genetic mutations that produce these physical changes, climatic elements, or other physical factors likely helped perpetuate these genetic mutations. In the thousands of years that have passed since the origin of Homo sapiens, the current races evolved and spread throughout the Earth. By the year 1500, 
just before Europeans began their great outward migration, each continent or continent was dominated by one of these racial populations. Two races met, intermingled and intermarriages took place. These border regions, which contain people related to both actions, are known as transition zones. Two examples could be, in North and East Africa there live a group of people who are known collectively as Hamites, later the youngest son of Noah Ham. They are dark-skinned, but have a number of Caucasoid characteristics, and are probably the result of admixture between the Caucasoid and Negroid tribe at an early period. The subsequent isolation and life in a hot sunny climate encouraged the persistence of their particular combination of characteristics. Similarly, on the border between the Caucasoid and Mongoloid people in Central Asia live a number of tribes that have been subjected to this mixing process. The Uzbegs of Uzbeg, Uzbekistan country of the former Soviet Union, include some who are clearly white, others who are pure Mongolian while the majority fall in between. Throughout history, humans have migrated and mixed with other populations, leading to the transfer of genes and mixing of characteristics. These migratory patterns have created a constant flow of genes between populations, further contributing to genetic variability. Modern genetic studies, using techniques such as DNA analysis, have provided a clearer view of human diversity and the origin of populations. These investigations have revealed that most genetic variation is found within populations rather than between them. This means that genetic differences between human populations are much smaller than we could have imagined, and that human diversity is the result of the gradual accumulation of small genetic differences over time. Therefore, the origin of human races cannot be attributed to a clear biological separation, since we share a great genetic similarity. Human diversity is the result of local adaptations to different environments and of migrations and historical mixtures between populations. It is important to recognize and celebrate this diversity as a testament to the human ability to adapt and thrive in different circumstances.